What up? What up? All rights reserved. All rights reserved. Let me put that copyright stuff on here. Anyway, what's up, y'all? Welcome to the show. Hey, let's see who's in the house. Let's just get this copyright stuff on the board right quick. Copyright. Put it on the screen so we can be clear. All right, this is the fair use disclaimer. Where is that? I have the real one. Let me just put it on the screen. Under section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976, Allowances made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, education, and research. That's what we're doing tonight. All right, so here we go. Copyright, copyright. Cut me some slack. Uh, YouTube. <laughs> All right. I'm looking for the actual copyright thing I have. But this will have to do for now. Can you dig it? Yeah, that's what's going to have to do for now. Y'all see it. Copyright disclaimer. All right, there we go. See if we got anybody in the house. No, we don't have anybody in the house yet. Well, I'm going to play some music. What up, everybody? It is the beginning of the interview. We just gonna pop it off with the songs as we usually do. The Fantastic Four, starring with his power to stretch, with the strength of a thousand men, Flame on Torch, and the Invisible Girl. The Fantastic Four, united in their fight against interplanetary evil. Fantastic. Tell me better watch your words. I'll abuse my powers like an officer. If I made the rock, does that mean I'm also no flesh to caress? Don't mean to 
bone, made a deal, travel back to a no time zone. 80 century with the show is kind of weird, but aliens there with the name Black Beard. It don't matter where I'm at, I'm always be feared. This astronaut's tougher than a meteor here in outer space, where it all took place. And the day buffet, you'll be erased my face. The safe to take a straight hate the way that I look and I live on a daily basis. The one's read my chase, and it does be paces. Become what's again from the human break. If I can do it all again, I wouldn't have to take it. My destiny, the path I was chosen to take it. Dealing with the heartache is part of the stake. This my destiny, the path I was chosen to take it. Dealing with the heartache is part of the stake. You can't match this match stick with a strike and yell by catch. Plasticity, phone, strong originality, phone blasticism, metastasis, family, home to velocity, blown project, ferocity, known to your master, be a grown man, wizardry for the lost city, and shall it melodies, and broadcast the cycle, but it's five of different tribes, passivity died when I tried to confide the reality at last, to be part of the soothing odyssey, jazz activity, modest, we will be not any more than stretch, treachery, oddities, now proud of you, some sketchy and edgy, yet promising no monopoly, as this becomes when there's a moment of victory, fast living, free robbery, who's the hero mobster, cash majesty, the bad guys, goblins, ghouls, and Problems which cast me types of outfits, ridiculous power, clear tenacity, bigger than coward and half flesh, mere fantasy. This is no intent to be mutant, seek candidacy and embassy diplomacy, could lead to the pure calamity. From approaching the magic, we become a canopy from the tapestry, normal apathy. At last, I'm free. <laughs> Call me, I'd be knocked silly by a sound wave. What a flat! Well, hey, hey, beyond. What up? What up? How's it going? Hey, peace, brother. Hey, are you able to hear me? Okay, I can't really hear anything out of this headphone. I can hear it in my speaker, but I can't hear it right here. Oh, we can hear you very clearly. Okay, perfect, perfect. Why and that's all that matters. Hey, let me ask you something. First of all, hey, everybody out there, you have some folks out there watching, and I'm very happy. Thank you. To the Tommy Cole Hall. But, um, hey, you know, Beyond, do you, do you remember, uh, what is that echo? Do you hear that? I can't hear anything. I can hear it like out of my speaker. Maybe maybe this headphone thing. I don't know. Oh, maybe it's because of the speaker. Like, do you have a speaker near you? Something like that. Just my laptop speaker. It's all good. Peace. Yeah. I'm so happy you're here. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thank you for the invite. It's a pleasure. Down, yeah, man. You're a fucking legend. You know what's funny about this legend thing? Do you remember do you remember me from the like, blow? You remember me? I, I remember you from, I mean, throughout the years and st I mean, I'm familiar. I can't like recall particular, like, you know. It's all good. The reason I asked, okay, is because I remember when you guys first came to the blow. Okay. That, back that, in like 97 or something? 96, yeah, that's about right. Way back then. I remember that. I remember you guys. I really thought you were very talented. I'm sorry. I'm looking at all kinds of woo woo. Whoo. You know who I was just with, man? Was oh, wild. With, with was, otherwise, yes. Yeah, I just seen. Uh, I seen uh, on Instagram. I seen you. You know, talking about. You know, you, you're hanging out with the uh, otherwise. You got a piece of books and stuff coming out. My son does this every time. Every time I, it's like a, it's like a tradition now. Every time I do a live, he has to come in, sniff around, sniff my food, whatever. Yeah, I have food. So what happened was. I was riding with otherwise he was asking me to take him somewhere. I went somewhere with him and then whoever he was trying to visit wasn't there. And then I had to drive him all the way back home. And then I was trying to get some Popeyes and uh, the line was long, like 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah, wait, wait. I realized I didn't have my wallet. So I left my wallet at otherwise's house. So I had to go all the way back to otherwise and that. And that. So that's why. <laughs> But anyway, back to you. So 97, man, how long had Acid Rain been around at that point? Um, at that point, Acid Rain 
Well, Gaja and I, we we met in uh, maybe like 94-ish, 93, I think 94. I, keep, I, I remember it as 93, but just kind of based on our age and everything, I think it was more like 94. We were a group called 3PM, and the M stood for Malifluent. And like Choo Choo, oh, wow. and nobody could say our name at Project Bloat, and they would clown us. <laughs> so one was dope though, because it stood for sweet sound, smooth flow, and a poetic voice and manner. So we thought that was ill, but no one could say it. So we had to find something different. And so, um, you know, we were searching, and then Gaja came up with Acid Rain. So as a group, we had been, you know, a group since like '94. And then as soon as I, as soon as like '96 hit, I got, as soon as I was 16 and I got a car. We're hitting uh, the tail end of the good life and Project Blow, like faithfully, um, just faithfully. Every every Thursday we were there. So I'm that's sorry. right around the time when you remember us. That was my other son. <laughs> it's cool. I got two of them, too, and they're always running around, so I know how that goes. Let me, let my... me hit this light real quick. Give me one second. So, hi, everybody. What's up, Jay? How you doing? Good to see uh, you. We have some regulars here. Uh Beyond, we have some some folks that, that pop in on the regular, so I'm very thankful for them. Thank you, audience. I appreciate you guys coming in. That's dope. I like but, the format, um, too. This is fresh. Just, where do I go? You go nowhere. You just push the link. That's fresh. I love it. <laughs> You're there. <laughs> and you know what's really cool about this this series? This is a series I'm doing, if you if you didn't know. It's a, it's called my it's called the Historical West Coast Legends. Oh, okay. I'm doing that category because you and Gaja have such a big following. And I, I love it. Can you hear me clearly? I can hear you good. Audience, let me know. Am I, feel, am I sounding uh, echoey? Let me know. Sony Brooks, Jay, see, let me know. I see some fire. I see some fire right there. I think they like it. Oh, my goodness. Okay, now, here's the thing. I love the visionaries. Like, I love the whole, like, you guys, okay? Because... If I understand correctly, it's like multiracial, like multi, like there's some Filipino family. A part of the visionaries, yes, there is. There, I think they're all mixed up. There's, you know, two Max Hispanic, then there's there's um, some Asians in there, and I, I'm not sure if I'm not sure what Elemental is, but um, they're they're very diverse. Not that that matters much, but it matters because L.A. Right. Yeah. Thank you, Ignacio. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, it matters because I was thinking about the, the the large following you have. You know what I mean? You have a very big following, particularly in Southern Cali. So I didn't know if that was, and I know specifically Acid Rain has a big following, of course. And I was just wondering if that had something to do with that, like the fact that it was multi, it was diverse. And, and that, you know, you know I, has I think when we came into it, there was, it was like, I, I don't remember very many, um, um, Hispanic MCs other than really like, um, you know, like the Tumex and Jism and St. Mark. And, and there was, a, I think a dude named, I had never met him, but I heard about him, Sesquo Padalian. I'm not even saying the name right, but he's another OG head from, I think like the Good Life and, and Project Blowed. But there was very few Hispanics that I remember that were really rhyming um, outside of like Chicano rap or being like a, like a cholo or like a gangster type rap. Right, like Kid Frost, like Kid, like Kid Frost type, type. You know, like other than you know, I mean, and even back then, Melo Menace was rhyming in Spanish and stuff. So, like, yeah, I don't, La Raza. I don't, yeah. Right. So, I don't really remember very many Hispanic people like us. So, I think what I feel like, and I mean, what what you know, what I feel in my heart and what I've seen was just, I feel like we kind of, especially as being so young, like we were at the bloat and we were starting to get recognition in our, you know, late teenagers. So I think, I feel that we kind of gave younger Hispanic cats who didn't want to be pigeonholed into like, you know, like, like cholo rap. Like we gave, we, we showed them like, you know, you can be you, you can, you can go out there and, and get on stage. You can be peers with people who are who who are not Hispanic and and get the um, get props and get recognition and 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 do your thing and and you know get get a uh, uh, you know popularity and and things yeah. like that with you know just just being yourselves and just doing you know the music that you feel in your heart and you know I mean Gaja's was Gaja was the creative force um, of Acid Rain and so just his ability to to just kind of drive us in an artistic way and then and then kind of it was his job to kind of bring the artistic abilities out of us and then it was my job to kind of 
man, like navigate that and, and make it in a business sense and kind of bring it to where we can actually be a group and, and you know, stuff like that. So I, I kind of feel like Acid Rain opened the door to, to a lot of Hispanic cats just having the confidence to go out there and do it. And then, you know, I mean, now it's just like there's a million Hispanic cats you know, and, and you know, not, not that any of not that all of them are fans of us or did it because of us, but I feel like we open the door for people who open the door for other people. Um, y'all you know, were younger than me, as a matter of fact. I kind of remember you youngins, y'all were teeny bops. That's true. Yeah, we, we were we were younger than everybody, and uh, but we you know we we enjoyed that because we you know we got to that I mean that just meant we had a whole bunch of older brother and sisters to kind of like take us under their wing and and just make sure that we were good and and you know. I, I really felt that 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 you know like I've seen how people interact with each other, and and the way people interacted with us, it was a very protective like yes. oh we got to we got to make sure Asterain is good like these guys you know so you know I, I'm very grateful for that I feel like the scene the you know the independent the underground hip hop scene really like embraced us and gave us the opportunity to just not have to focus on anything else except for making the music. Now I do, I do gotta, I, now I think back, some of our, like our mentors were LPG, uh, which is Dax and Journey. Those guys were like, you know, and they're, they're like the, the leaders of Tunnel Rats. Those are another Hispanic cats. They were actually our youth pastors. That's that's how we asked the rain even, or that's how we became. Uh, my stepdad was always trying to find ways to keep us involved and, and be positive and in the church. And so he took me because it, he actually got Dax to be the youth pastor at our church. And then Gaja's uncle, he was like, well, Gaja's living in Baldwin Park. I don't want him to get caught up with gangsters. And he's into rap. This guy's a rapper. Let's see. So that's how we met. And um, so Journey and Dax we were huge, huge, like, like you know, we really looked up to those guys. They kind of put us on game and and just kind of showed us, showed us the way. And, and from there, we just, you know, navigated through and, again, became part of Bloat and just focused on our music. And our music took us to so many cool places that we we – like places that we dreamt of going, uh, but you know, it, it was able to happen. So, you know. I apologize. I should have mentioned the lighting situation. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna, so, we're gonna I should have mentioned that. Um, just I mean, we're still learning. Yeah. Uh, your lighting is really good now. Like I'm yeah, like the screen behind me keeps going off and on. So I'm clicking it to make sure it stays uh stays yeah. trying, trying okay, to keep it consistent. We're seeing, we're seeing you good. I do want to give a shout out because you know. I am older than you a little bit. Um, Ralph M, you know, for, there was Funk Dubious. Oh, yeah. Funk Dubious was a very popular uh, underground yeah. group. They're I'm in the age group of like volume 10. You know, they're yeah. like a little bit older. 13, 14 years older than you or something like that. But mm -hmm. Ralph M, Funk Dubious. Uh, yeah. um, and I used to hang out with this cat. I forget his name, but he was in a group called the Mexicans. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Mexicans. Yeah. And those were another, another set of, of cats that were, um, yeah. it's like, it's crazy. I mean, they, they, uh, they're like right on that borderline. They could go yeah. Chicano red, they can go underground. I mean, yeah. you know, they, they, yeah. they were, you know, another group that was really dope. Um, innovators from, from, you know, from way back. The reason I mentioned, uh, that brother in particular, because we were working on some, we were going to write some songs together. And I like, I, I admired his flow. I can't even, it was 95, honey. It was a long time ago. Mm -hmm. But um, shout out, shout out to anybody who sees that from the groups. Um, yeah, um, I also wanted to, if you don't mind, I kind of was curious to know how your life has been post-Gaja. Like, it's oh, man, it's been, it's been hard. It's been. That's a question uh, about four people asked me to ask you. So I'm going to ask. Yeah. So it, it's been very hard and just trying to under, trying to, trying to figure out how to, uh, you know, just kind of finish the work that we started yeah. and then uh, find creative ways to keep his, his, his legacy alive. Like I said, he was the creative force for not just my group, but for our entire circle of people wow. um, and our circles have, you know, they, they, you know, they, that's a lot, there's a lot of people involved and he was just uh, some, some else, a very creative, very unique person. Yes. Um, and yeah, so his law, his, you know, his passing was so sudden and unexpected. Um, you know, I, we were supposed to hang out Thursday night. He's like, Hey man, I'm not feeling good on my stomach. You know, I've been having, you know, my stomach's been hurting. They said I got gallstones and a kidney stone. They said, it'll go away. I'm taking the medicine and I should be good. Okay, cool. Cool. So we won't, we're going to go out to the tobacco lounge in Riverside Thursday night. And so 
I was like, all right, cool, no problem, man. I'll go with that. You know, I'll hit you, I'll hit you up tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow comes, Friday morning comes, and I get a call from my man Express, and yeah, and he, he broke the news to me, and I, 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 didn't, I had, had to go to his house. I had to go to his house to make sure I was like, it was real, and yeah, it was it was real. Are you telling me you talked to him the night before he passed? Yeah, I talked to him. My my actually my wife works at a holistic uh, doctor's office, so I told her what was going on. She she got like a a, a, a drink, like a holistic drink yeah. for him. I was gonna go give it to him. And I was going to give it to him that Thursday night, you know, not that that would have repaired him overnight, but you know, I was, you know, the intent was, okay, if he's not feeling well, if someone with a stomach, let's get him some holistic medication let's get him back on track. And, and, and he's um, past these, these gallstones or let's pass these kidney stones and maybe get his gallstone pulled out. And that's very normal stuff. Um, you know, so let's guys go through it. But then, you know, I guess it was worse than that. And, he didn't have insurance, so maybe the hospital when they, you know, they they just didn't treat him right and send him home. Because normally, when you go to the ER or something, even if they don't repair you, they send you home feeling good. He was still in pain when he went home, and that was on a like Tuesday night, Monday night, Tuesday night. So he was dealing with that pain, taking the the medication they prescribed, and the medication they prescribed was only like like pain medication, right? So malpractice basically yeah basically so i mean and that's a whole nother thing that i think you know that's going to be looked into or that's already you know there's some things you know on the works on that but nonetheless even if even if even if we find out that it was malpractice i mean that's not going to bring him back you know yeah I know. so um but yeah so, it's, it's, been, it's been really hard every day every day so i mean i think about him every day me i think about y'all too actually you know you know uh because not to tell husband business but you know, he was dealing with a lot of health issues, but I'm really about that herb life and that, you know, I really shoved a lot of herbs up his ass. You know what I'm yeah. saying? No pun intended. Yeah. yeah, I mean, and that's good that he has a woman right there to, to, to you know, to take care of him. Sometimes as guys, we just, you know, it'll go away. It'll go away. Uh, we'll yeah, he was kind of kind of doing that. And, yeah. you know, you don't like to see your loved one in pain. No. You know, so I, I, I made him take a lot of herbs. and. and yeah, stuff. well, that's good. I, I'm grateful he has you to do that. I'm thankful, you know. Um, here's here's the thing. Um, we've lost so many people, man, in the last yeah. couple of years, especially, you know. And, you know, it was to the point where at my job, I was having, like, first it started literally, the, this round started with, like, Ross G. Yeah. That was, like, the first day I started training at my job. And then... Oh every other week and then like a few in a week and it was just like going down like that for like two years yeah to the point where at my job i was accused of lying <laughs> how could you know so many people <laughs> that are passing and they were like, wow. how come you know so many people that are dying and i'm like i don't fucking know but that's not something i would lie about and i yeah. found that out when i got my next job the lady told me you know the lady told me that um she thought they thought you were lying. She lies about stuff like that. Yeah. What was that? Yeah, but anyway, wild. yeah, I'm sorry for I'm just, you know, we all went through the whole I'm so sorry, but I still say I'm so sorry. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I mean it's yeah, it's I, it's still <laughs> unbelievable. It still feels unreal. I still, you know, like I said, we have unfinished work that that you know that now we're um, you know, Omeka and, and myself are, are working on finishing up. So as the rain is all three of us. So started off with Gaj and myself, Omeka came in. There's been a bunch of different people who tried to come into Acid Rain and be a part of it. And it it just didn't didn't work for whatever reason. Um, but when Omeka came in, it was just kind of like a completion to 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 our Triforce and to what we were doing. So now it's just Omeka and I finishing up. We have, I don't know, probably about seven, six to seven songs um, that we were working on with uh, Duke Westlake. He produced all the beats. So we, we were just, um, now we're finishing that. And, you know, I, I'm not even sure why, because <laughs> this is a project that's been, you know, outside of even Gaja passing, even if it was last year and Gaja was still, we were talking, last, you know, a year ago where Gaja was still here, I would still say we're working on this album that just has been taking way too long. Um, I, you know, but, but regardless, we're, we're finishing that up. We do, I mean, it's some really fresh stuff. The crazy thing is we have a song called, a song about death. It's about death, man. And and I totally forgot about it. And as we were going through songs, man, oh, that one just hit. That one hit hard because it's, and just the things that he's, that he's saying in it, it's just like, oh my goodness, guys, you're like, uh. Were you even sick then? What, did he know? 
Well, yeah. So when he was, uh, I think, third, so about probably about a year before I met him, when he was about 13 or 12, 13 years old, he had, um, he got gangrene uh, of the bowels or something. So they had basically had to cut like 13 feet of intestines. So I guess whenever that happens and you have uh, operation like that, you run the risk of getting perforations later. So I guess that's like, it doesn't heal, you know, it's, it's, it heals, but it's not the same, right? There's, there's something there. So what I guess ended up happening was those were getting maybe like it came open or something. And that's, that was the pain that he was feeling. And that was the, what was going on with him as far as why his stomach hurt. That's why he went to the doctors that they did find, you know, the gallstone, the kidney stone, but that the real issue was the perforations there and that they were tearing or something. And, um, and I guess he was leaking from the inside, you know, in, in bacteria into his body. So, in his blood, you know. yeah. so yeah. So as long as I've known him, this guy could like, man, see, he eats something. He's, he's hungry th- an hour later because he's, it's always going right through him. Cause he only got like that much intestine. Right? So, and that's why he's always been so thin. Like this guy, like, you know, tall and thin. He was it has, so a lot, has a lot to do with because just because of his, his stomach issues. Yeah. And he always would complain on oh, my stomach, but you know, it's like, you really don't know the degree of, of what's happening. And, and again, he's, he didn't have insurance. So it's not like he was one of the doctor on a regular, he wasn't getting checkups. Even when, and when it hurt, he was, he was pulling a volume and, 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 you know, toughing it out. And then he, you know, because his body, you know, we're, you know, we just, we're barely in our, in our early forties. Right. So our right. body, his body was able to kind of endure all this time up just up until now. And so, yeah, that we didn't, again, we didn't it know. Seems like, it seems like during the Corona time, Whatever issues you had, they brought yeah, up. They surfaced. Yeah, mm-hmm. I would say that because, you know, even like I was in labor with my daughter for 56 hours. Wow. It's two and a half days. Wow. And um, she, her head was just like, she wouldn't, she just didn't want to come out. Mm-hmm. And it was my first baby. And I had to like try to visualize because I didn't know what went into labor like that. I didn't know. And um, during Corona, like I pulled a gang of ligaments when I birthed her. Like I couldn't mm. walk for six months. Right? Like wow. I, could, I could walk from like this chair to like a couple feet and that's it for six months. So during Corona, when I got Corona, all those ligaments hurt. Isn't that crazy? That's like, crazy. I could barely walk for like a month. Oh man. So it seemed like whatever that was or is, it mm-hmm. triggered things that are the weak parts of your body. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, man. Yeah. But you know what it did? You know what it did tap me into? It made me get into my comedy. I don't know if you've watched okay. any of my stuff, but I've been well, doing I, I know that I have seen through some of your stuff that you that you are into, you know, that you do do have some comedy bits and stuff. Yeah, I, that but after Mean Green passed is why. Mm. Because so many people were like tired of just everybody's just losing homie, man. Yeah. Uh, so I was like, a, uh, that's another like, one that hit hard. Mean Green. Right. We just man. visited him too. Ah, when we were kids, he was just one of the ones that like didn't treat us like 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 uh like kids, you know. He didn't treat us like okay, you're the young guys that are you know that are learning that need to hey, listen, guys, this is the way it goes, or when we're on the road, do you know he wasn't he wasn't one of those ones, he was just one, like a if he was one of us, like, you know, we're, we're equal to him. He was just mad cool with us and man. And, and before he passed, he had sent me a message, like, let's do a song. All right, cool. Let's do it. OG, we're down. Let's do it. And then, you know, it's always, the intent is always there and we're going to do it. And then, he, you know, Mean Green passed. It's like, oh my gosh, is that why he wanted to do a song? Like he, he knew, you know, he knew his time was, was, you know, um, man, and I just wish I didn't sleep on that. Same here, you know. Dino Volume and I, we had just we visited his big ass, we had the, the big um, what is it called? Um, warehouse, yeah, that, that warehouse that he was putting together, Las Vegas. And uh, yeah, it was dope. And we had just stopped by his house, too. I'm just not to be all morbid and keep talking about this stuff, but you know, it is yeah. really, it really is deep. And I don't know if we've all actually just talked about these things, you know, not really. Yeah. Not really, um, because we are like a family. We're like a hip hop mm-hmm. collective family. Definitely, definitely. You know, so it's just, and now we're all getting older. That's what made me interview Julio, as a matter of fact, mm. because I was thinking of him as like, you know, he used to manage me in the nineties. Oh, okay. 
he lived in Las Vegas as well. So I I don't even know how I reconnected, but I wanted to go see him and bring him some uh, lemon herbs and all that too, beyond because his asthma, he always had like breathing issues. And I called him the day he passed, you know what I mean? Like I called him that day. But I didn't get there soon enough. Like I, I just, I, I held that. I felt that for like, I'm still just starting to try to sleep now. Yeah. So I didn't know how to, that's why I asked, I guess, because I yeah. know, and that was your partner, you know, I can imagine. Yeah, so. that was my brother. Like, yeah, we were, I mean, I, I could, there was years where we hung out every single day, like years and years and years where every day it was just, you know, acid rain, acid, you know, it was just like, we lived for acid rain. Like everything was, you know, even, even, you know, I always had a job. I had a son when I was 18. So I've always had um, responsibilities. So I've always had to have a job, but it's all right. I'll go do a job. And I had a lot of support with my family. So if I was, you know, I was always able to be out and working on music. My, my family's very supportive and very, they, they knew Gaja was a great, you know, they knew we weren't up to no good. Like, you know, we were always on, on the, on the, on the right side of things, even though we were out in the streets and stuff. Um, so we, I got, plenty of time to to go out and, and just be a young cat and so together we were always just working on music we when we didn't have our own studios we were at other people's studios and once we had our own studios we would just be buried in there just working on songs 